Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. And with me today, we're going to be speaking with Loves and Fishes. With me is Julie Piper Finley, who is the Director of Marketing and Communications for Loves and Fishes. Nice to have you here, Julie. Thank you, Monica. Thanks for being here. Now, Loves and Fishes is um, a big organization. And you were telling me before that it covers, what, what is the area? Loads and Fishes Centers is the senior nutrition program for Multnomah and Washington counties in Oregon and Clark County in Washington state. And we do one thing and one thing only, we feed seniors. We have two programs. We have the uh, centers, we have 36 dining rooms within the uh, metropolitan area where seniors can come in for lunch. And if you can't drive and you're homebound, you can't cook for yourself, we will bring you Meals on Wheels. And the way the system works is the only qualification is you have to be 60 years or older. That's it. It's That's not it. an income-based program. Mm -hmm. So you might be a millionaire and live in a beautiful home, but you can't drive. You might have broken a hip. You live by yourself. So how are you going to feed yourself? So all you need to do is call up Loaves and Fishes Centers and we'll bring you a hot meal. Wow. We deliver five days a week, Monday through Friday, every year. So you just have the weekends off and... Right, we do f um, feed about 300 people on the weekends as well. And these are people who are very frail. They have no other source mm -hmm. of food. They have no one to help them at all. So if wow. we didn't bring them a meal on the weekend, they they'd have nothing between Friday and Monday. Now, how long has Lois and Fishes been around? We were founded in 1970, and even though we have a rather biblical sounding name, it's not a faith-based organization. It was formed by a public health nurse and a social worker and um, someone from Catholic Charities. And they saw there were people in their neighborhood who weren't eating. They weren't getting out for food. So they brought 14 Meals on Wheels on paper plates wrapped in foil and delivered them to the people in their neighborhood. That was in 1970. That's great. Today, and where was that? It was in Southeast Portland. Okay. And today we feed 5,000 people every day. <laughs> My goodness, that's so huge. It's grown quite a bit. That is a, that's huge growth. Mm -hmm. So um, the organization then obviously has grown like crazy, but how, you said people only have to be six years of age right. and that's it. It's mm -hmm. not income based, it's not ability to take care of themselves mm -hmm. or it's not because they're disabled or anything like right. that. Mm -hmm. So the, all they have to do is call. That's for Meals on Wheels. So for, for Meals, meals on, on Wheels, wheels. you okay. have to be homebound and unable to cook for yourself and okay. age 60 or older. Okay. But for our 36 um, dining rooms in the metropolitan area, you just need to be 60. Every center is a little bit different. We have one in uh, Gresham, it's called the Ambleside Center, that's actually not too far from your building it's here. It's at the senior center, right? Right, it's right at the- Down the, the street. Right, at the um, county building. Right. We have a new center in Rockwood, in the new Rockwood building yes. on uh, Burnside, which is a beautiful center. Part of the Human Solutions, big- Right, big, it's yeah, in the in Human Solutions building, building yes, right. We have one near um, Mall 5 we have them in Vancouver, we have them everywhere. Every center has a different personality. Some have yeah. ethnic food. We have a center in Vancouver that has Russian food once a week. We have Big a Russian community though. Yes. yes. We have centers that have uh, Chinese food made in walks every day. We have centers that have Hispanic food. We have centers that have soul food. So every center has its own personality and a little bit different food. That's great. So every day, at what, is it lunch? It's lunch. It's lunch mm -hmm. every day. A noon? A noon? A noon appointment at. Uh, you can come in anytime between about 11:30 and one, and lunch is available. People show up. Yes. They mm -hmm. don't have to make appointments or. No appointment They don't necessary. have to make reservations for lunch. No reservations either. So what do you do with uh, as director of marketing and communications? Mm -hmm. You just get the word out about what's going on. Right. And I I produce all of the printed materials that we have, the newsletters, the annual reports. I write speeches. I maintain the website. I deal with come all the media. Come on television shows. Come on television shows and radio shows. Right. My job is to let everyone know that meals are available for seniors. So what what to you is the most rewarding thing about working at Lowe's and Fishes? It's working with the seniors themselves. They are the most wonderful people and have such fabulous life experience. These are people who have lived through the Depression, through mm. World War II, through the Vietnam War. They have seen it and done it all. And they're- History. Yes, and they're, history. they're just lovely people. Can you give me examples? Have you, have you had some personal interaction with a lot of the, I'm sure you have with a lot of yes. people. Yes, I deliver Meals on Wheels myself and have for many oh. years. And what's interesting about a lot of these seniors is they so want to maintain their independence. And sometimes it's that hot meal that is what allows them to stay in their own home. I delivered meals for many years to a lady who couldn't see 
for the most part. She was nearly blind. And about once a month when I delivered her meal, she'd ask me to read the numbers on her prescription bottle and write them in really big letters and numbers. And then she wanted me to stand by her while she phoned in her prescription. Oh. Because for her, that was her level of independence. If she could still phone in that prescription, she could live independently oh, on her own. I love it. And, and you're able to help her. Yes. So tell me, a lot of the Meals on Wheels drivers, they do more than just deliver meals, don't they? It's very true. They help with prescriptions. Sometimes they will um, do simple things like take out the trash or change a light bulb. But some of our volunteers are very dedicated. They mow lawns. Oh, wow. <laughs> they sometimes will pick up extra groceries for their seniors. There's one gentleman, in fact, I just talked to last week who's in here in the Gresham area, and he's very frail and lives by himself. And he has a Meals on Wheels driver who always brings him strawberries from the Gresham <laughs> Farmer's Market. I love it. That's great. Mm -hmm. I bet the regular drivers develop a, a real rapport and get a, a real relationship going with some of their regulars, don't you they? You do, because most people will deliver Meals on Wheels route once a week. So say you deliver every Tuesday from the Gresham Center, you'll be delivering to those same people every single week, and you do get very attached to them. Mm -hmm. The sad part is we are dealing with an elderly population, right. and sometimes people on the route go into assisted living, or they might move away and move in with their uh, adult children in another state, or sometimes they pass away, and that's the hard yeah, part. Yeah, that would be that would be the hard part. It mm -hmm. definitely would, but I think it would be very rewarding. It is. And so the, the people that work at the um, Elevens and Fishes um, providing the meals mm -hmm. are these volunteers. Or we are these have staff? Uh, just over a hundred employees. Um, we have a large central kitchen in Loma Village. There's about 25 employees there. That's where all the food starts. We have an administrative staff, and then each of our 36 locations has two employees. But the vast majority of our workforce are volunteers. We use 9,500 volunteers every year. Wow. That's about 500 a day. <laughs> That's a lot mm -hmm. of volunteers. Right. So. If, do you always have a need for volunteers? Always. Do you know what the biggest need is? It's is it? always for Meals on Wheels drivers. Mm -hmm. Because we deliver our meals in the middle of the day during the noon hour, uh, it's a challenge for working people. Yes. So what we suggest to people is they do an adopt a route. So say you work for um, Wells Fargo Bank in Gresham, say, mm -hmm. and you'd like to deliver meals, but it's kind of a hardship for you to take an hour once a week because of meetings and such. What we suggest is that you adopt a particular route at the center and you and your coworkers share that responsibility. So you'll deliver this Tuesday, the person in the cube next to you would deliver the next Tuesday mm -hmm. and so on. I like that. So someone from the bank would deliver every single week, but you personally are only impacted maybe once every six or eight weeks. Oh, that's great. That's mm -hmm. a great solution. It is. I bet you have all sorts of good solutions. We have many corporate teams that do that. I bet you do. So um, you also have events that go on, right? We do. Our, uh, we have two really large events. We have one in the fall called Donate Dinner, and that's in conjunction with a number of independent grocers. Uh, New Seasons Market started for us about mm -hmm. 10 years ago, and when you go shopping for your Thanksgiving food, the five days before Thanksgiving, you can donate dinner to a senior when you check out. Just add the cost of a meal onto your uh, check. And we have 28 or 29 grocers 1,500 volunteers over a five-day period that do that for us. But then our other large event is coming up this spring. We have a spring luncheon in both Clark County, which is on April 12th, and in Portland at the Convention Center on May 3rd. This is where corporate business people uh, come together for one hour <coughs> to learn about Lowe's and Fishes Centers, about how we serve seniors, and then they make a donation. So in the uh, Clark County, we have about 350 uh, Vancouver and Clark County business and um, philanthropists, and in Portland it's about a thousand people. Wow. We get together for just an hour. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. I bet at that type of event you also convert a lot of people into volunteering. We do. We usually have a keynote speaker who talks about their experiences with loaves and fishes. Last year it was Dave Dahl of Dave's Killer Bread. Ah, yes. Dave has delivered meals for us. He donates about a thousand loaves of bread to us wow. every week. And so he talked very movingly about his experiences as a Meals on Wheels driver. Oh, and then God. we always have a video where we have cute little seniors and we talk about <laughs> how much they like our food and their drivers. And people they do. They open up their checkbooks and write us checks, and we get a lot of people that volunteer to deliver. You get the kids, the 
animals or the seniors. Those are all it's tug of the heart so strings. True. <laughs> so true, so <laughs> true. Those are all the ones that are the most fun to deal with. So tell me, the, the spring luncheon um, in Clark County and the spring luncheon in Portland, mm -hmm. if people are interested in going to that, is it is it just for businesses to attend? No, it's really anyone who's interested. It just primarily draws people because it's a good thing to do on a weekday for your lunch hour. There you go. Um, it's a non-ticketed event, so we're not charging anyone to attend the event, but we are going to make a donation appeal. Yes. right? And so it's very easy if you want to register to attend. You can go to our website, which is feedseniors.org. That's or easy. Call our main switchboard at 503-736-6325 and we'll get you signed up. So you will be feeding people at this luncheon. I yes, assume. they actually do receive lunch at the luncheon. <laughs> <laughs> Heck of a deal. Well, they get the same thing that Meals on Wheels seniors get. You know, they don't. We've talked about doing something like that. It's funny that you should say that, that sometime when we get those thousand business people in the room, that we should get them the hot pack and the cold pack and the little carton of Alpenrose milk, just like we give for our seniors. <laughs> How did who makes the decisions on what is served and, and what about people that have special dietary restrictions and all that kind of stuff? Well, we have a registered dietitian that helps us plan our menus as well as a food service director and they plan the menus about six weeks out. And we have a, a main entree that is created at our central kitchen. And are we talking about Meals on Wheels here? We're talking, we're talking about all everything? the meals. Okay. So the, the 36 centers and the Meals on Wheels. Okay. So there's one basic uh, meal that's uh, developed for everyone. And then each of the centers also has um, second and sometimes third entrees that they cook on location. That's where the ethnic meals come in, the Mexican food, the Chinese food, the um, Russian food. We also have either salad bars or entree salads at each of our locations. If you have a specialized diet, such as you need low sodium, uh, low cholesterol, diabetic diet, that's all covered by our DASH diet, which stands for um, diet, something about hypertension, you know, those, those yes, letters yes. stand for something, but it covers all of those specialized diets. We can also do a soft diet. We are somewhat limited if you need a therapeutic diet, such as a liquid diet, something mm -hmm. like that. We mm -hmm. really aren't in a position to do that. What about vegetarian? We have not had an official vegetable-based diet um, as a, an option, I'd say. Mm -hmm. We can accommodate usually vegetable-based diets at our 36 dining locations. For Meals on Wheels, it's a little bit more challenging, but that's the next thing on our plate, you might say, for <laughs> developing is a vegetable-based diet, especially with um, the younger seniors, people who are just now turning 60, they have a far more developed palate than someone who's 85 or 90. They've traveled yeah. more, they've had more food choices. They tend to request a vegetable-based diet. So we're looking at ways where we can have enough protein within, um, especially a Meals on Wheels diet, to meet our federal requirements and still have a vegetable-based diet. That's interesting. It's interesting to see the changes, I imagine, in, in the food from back oh, when it first started hugely. to now. Hugely. You know, it used to be that our diet was, you know, back in 1970, we had meatloaf, we had, um, you know, very meat and potato based diet. Uh -huh. Now it's far more fresh, it's mm -hmm. far more healthy. As I mentioned, we have either an entree salad or a salad bar available at all of our centers for the weekdays. Um, some of our entrees include um, wraps where we'll have like, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. tortillas. Right, with, um, right. Those are good. Chicken and, and very popular, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. So we have a number of. Um, entrees that are, are a little bit more hip than you would think would be served for a senior <laughs> nutrition program. Well, people are a lot more savvy about what's good for them and, and That's very true. you know eating locally and, and sustainable and getting more produce and, and learning how to cook it better. You know? It's true. One thing that we did last year is we moved to a fresh vegetable if at all possible. It's a little bit more challenging in the winter but in the summer because we, we do have access to local farmers and local produce if it says carrots on the menu it's carrots that we've received from a farm. If it says beets they're fresh beets. If it says berries it means we've gotten them just that day or the day before mm. from the farmer. That's they're not frozen. But don't you miss those anemic canned peas? No. <laughs> those are so <laughs> gross. You, you mentioned that Dave's Killer Bread donates, yes. donates bread. Do you have other organizations that donate we, food? We do somewhat. Because we have such a huge volume, 5,000 meals a day, we're not an organization that depends on donations of food unless it's in mass quantities. Because we do have some federal requirements on what we include in our meal. It has a certain amount of protein, certain number of servings of fruits and vegetables and such and because we have to meet that menu profile and plan so many weeks out, we are a large purchaser of food. That being said, we have a number of vendors who give us 
wonderful deals. For mm -hmm. example, I mentioned Alpen Rose Milk. Mm -hmm. They have been our sole milk provider for 42 years. Wow. Um, we have the big food trucks and the produce trucks and the meat trucks pull up to our loading dock just like the restaurants do. Uh, but yeah. if someone has a 5,000 portions of something and wishes to donate it, we will Bring certainly it on, huh? take Bring it. Bring it on. Yes. Um, one last thing I wanted to ask you about. You mentioned that you have federal guidelines, mm -hmm. um, but this isn't a federal uh, program, is no, it? Um, How yes does that and work? no. We receive about 30% uh, of our funding from the federal government through the Older Americans Act. It's money that's been designated specifically for feeding seniors. That money is funneled to every county in the United States, and the county is responsible for figuring out how to feed the seniors in their area. What Multnomah and Washington and Clark County have done is they basically hired us to feed to seniors. Feed so they give us that little bit of money that they have and we supplement it with fundraising. But because we do get that bit of federal funding, we have to meet federal guidelines right, for the diet. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, well, that, that's a good choice on their part, I it think. It is, I think. <laughs> I think that's a very good choice. Is there anything else that we should know about uh, Meals on Wheels or the, the uh, regular meal plan for Loaves and Fishes at the 36 locations? Or Well, as I mentioned, because we just have 30% of our funding from the federal government, we do fundraise the rest. And so we are always looking for donations, and it's very easy to do. You can donate online at feedseniors.org. You can stop in at any one of our 36 neighborhood locations and make a donation or volunteer. Everyone's welcome. Great. That's, I think that pretty much takes care of it. <laughs> Thanks very much, Julie. Um, so if people are interested, they can go to your website, feedseniors.org. Yes. They can get information there. I assume also on the, um, on the events coming up, the luncheons. Yes, you can look at our menu. You can find out information about all of our centers, what's going on, read press releases, see videos. It's a fun website. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks very much for watching this evening's show of Community Hotline. Don't forget to stay tuned. Next week, we'll be doing the Pulse version, which means we'll be talking about Metro East and KZME and what's going on here in our location in Gresham. In the meantime, be sure to watch for that spring luncheon that's going to be going on in, in uh, Clark County and in Portland. If you want more information, go to feedseniors.org. I'm Monica Weitzel. This is Community Hotline. Thanks for joining us.